you, boy. He always gives me that really big buildup, and it's always hard to live up to, but um, he mentioned Dartmouth. I didn't come from the East. I grew up in the West, and I went to school out there. The year they started the Native American program at Dartmouth, and so being from the West, I was like a fish out of water, and most of the Native kids that were the new students, the first class of 15 freshmen at Dartmouth College, when they rededicated the original purpose of the college to education of Native youth, they, were, they became my running buddies. And this was starting in 1970 through 1974. And so we watched the things that happened during those days, the, uh, what happened in Washington, D.C., what happened in Boston Harbor, what happened at Wounded Knee that started 50 years ago this week. And so those were the dramas going around at the time. And so I've really been blessed because it's uncommon for somebody from my background to have had the exposure to Native culture of a lot that's been shared with me. Oftentimes interactions been one way. Native people learn how to do it this way. And it's been an uncommon privilege to be able to open eyes and see the world from a Native perspective. And so a lot of my life has been with that. And, um, and it, so it's been, a, it's been an honor to take part in that. And I, just looking around the room here, I see people like Mr. Frost here that, uh, gosh, we go back to when the rocks were still soft, huh? Yeah, boy lad, that's when the rocks were even softer. <laughs> but um, um, I came down to work for Taos Pueblo for 12 years in the late 80s and the 90s. And I knew many of Max Wazel's relatives that were uh, uh, treasured friendships from those days. And at Taos, in many of the honoring things they do, you'll see a line of singers with hand drums. And so uh, we wanted to honor that tradition. Some, when we go to a powwow, we sing with a big drum like that, like the way we sang our, our, uh, our drum song to start off today. But, uh, but sometimes for honorings and things such as that, we will, we will use the hand drum. And so today we want to we want to honor, um, you know, this, this singing tradition, Exit. You know, they broke the mold. They were the first Native rock band to make it big. And, uh, and all of us that are old enough that danced away back in our younger days to that, that started so much. And they were the group that was emulated by so many. And they, they were getting started at the time when Native pride was starting to return and people were swelling with pride and joy. And, and bands like Exit was a way for young people to be Native, to be proud, and also be part of modern society and not be conflicted, but they could be whole. And so these were some of the messages that came out of that. And, and for those reasons, bands like Exit, the people that made that happen, you know, they touched our hearts and they changed our lives and they became forever part of our memories that we carry going forward. And so it's a, it's a real joy for us to be invited to share in this celebration today. So we're going to sing a memorial song. We've never sung it in public before, so I hope we don't mess it up after the boy lad gives us that big build up. But uh, the words to this song say, when the people come together, there's going to be a celebration, but who will sing for them? Taos boy, actually, red willow boy. Kola. Gokia Ivalelo. Friend, you have gone somewhere. 
And so you can see a lot of the poetry and the metaphors in, in the music. And so, so we'd like to uh, offer this, this memorial song. Um, and um, usually when we're singing for a specific individual, it's a lot of our tradition to, to remove our hats, and it's part of the respect that we show. And so, that's the one.